It's the early dawn on the 10th of December, 1941. A task force of ships are off the coast of Malaya. They're hoping to launch a surprise attack against the Japanese, who they think are in Kuantan. The head of the task force is the HMS Prince of Wales and its captain, John Jack Leach. Sir, Tenedos is signaling distress. Bloody fools. We're under radio silence. This is better be good. Leach speaks urgently with Admiral Phillips. Sir, Tenedos is under a Japanese bomber attack. It's the worst possible situation. With horror, they need to accept that the Japanese have found them and the entirety of Task Force Z is within range. Outside, the air trembles with the engines of Japanese aircraft. They come through the clouds and line up their target. First, they go for the aging battlecruiser, HMS Repulse. The bombs are away, they scream down towards the ship and a tall column of water erupts on the starboard side, followed by several more on the port side. Captain Tennant of Repulse orders... All hands to action stations! A 250 kilogram bomb screams down. There's an enormous explosion as the bomb hits the Repulse amidships. The captain is thrown to the floor, as are the rest of the bridge. The bomb has penetrated through the port seaplane hangar and devastated the armoured deck below. It's a scene of carnage as the fallen lie around the hangar. Repulse emerges from the fray with a plume of smoke coming from her upper deck where she'd been struck. Damage report. No critical damage. Her speed though is unaffected and she steams on, emitting just the faintest smoke curl. On the Prince of Wales, Leach turns and gives an order. Action stations, repel aircraft. More shapes emerge from the clouds. It's 67 Japanese bombers. Two squadrons separate and approach the capital ships in a pincer formation designed to reduce the effectiveness of the British anti-aircraft gunfire. From eight miles away, they begin their dive. Philip's demeanour hardens as he broadcasts the order All ships increase speed to 25 knots. All captains are granted freedom to manoeuvre. An officer hunches over his radio. For a message. Over. His face drops. Sir, the aircraft to port appeared to be carrying torpedoes. There is no such aircraft around. Phillips observes the sight through binoculars and watches aghast. The Japanese aircraft continue to lose height and fly into some low cloud before appearing off the Prince of Wales port bow. Nine Japanese planes start their approach. They see the British ship in the distance as they come in skimming the waves. There's a flash as one by one the British anti-aircraft guns open fire. Tracers arc up towards the black dots in the sky and after 12 salvos, the guns switch from controlled fire at individual planes to barrage fire, hurling a curtain of bursting shells to provide a flak barrier for the hostile planes, desperately trying to force them to drop their torpedoes early. The Japanese planes keep coming. The loaders begin trembling as they push shells into the magazine feeds, hoping that something, anything, will down just one of the planes. The British anti-aircraft gunners, however, are unprepared for the sheer speed of the Japanese planes. Most of the British anti-aircraft shells burst well behind the aircraft as they bear down upon the British ships. Battered but still flying, the Japanese pilots bravely push on until their torpedoes are in range. They drop. The fish are away. On the Prince of Wales, there's horror as Captain Leach barks the order. Hard to port! attempting to slip through the tracks of the torpedoes. Meanwhile, the Japanese bombers are too large and too fast to pull away quickly, and they fly straight at the Prince of Wales, machine gunning as they go. 
reaching the battleship well before their torpedoes do, and causing disorder on her decks, killing and wounding sailors as they approach. The British gunners are now firing at near point-blank range. A Betty bomber takes a flak shell to the wing, which snaps it from the body, causing it to spin and dramatically slam into the water. But there's no time to celebrate. Two torpedoes move straight towards the ship, and there's no avoiding a hit. All the men aboard brace for impact. Down! The first one strikes. A pillar of water erupts on the port side of the Prince of Wales and punches through the outer hull. But thankfully, there's only limited flooding. Moments later, the second torpedo strikes the Prince of Wales under her stern, blasting open a hole some four meters high and six meters wide. It's a critical blow. There's now a direct route for water into the very heart of the ship, sweeping sailors off their feet and drowning the ship's engine room. Her speed immediately starts dropping. As water floods into her, emergency pumps are unable to stop the steady rise. The sailors continue to attempt repairs, wading through water now waist deep to get to the hull. She begins listing the port. On the deck, the gunners keep shooting to the point where the air can almost burn the skin. But their rounds explode behind the Japanese planes and the men brace for another impact. All the sailors can do is watch, wait, hold on and hope. The tracks zip towards the ship and a torpedo strikes the Prince of Wales. Her electrical system at the stern suffers massive damage. Without power, both the steering motors are dead. The Prince of Wales is a sitting duck. She's now a death trap. Captain Leach orders, Flood the void spaces of the starboard torpedo defense system. We need the ship level. He needs the ship level, or almost level, so that his men can train their anti-aircraft guns, which are currently pointing too high. But this also makes the ship more vulnerable should she receive another torpedo strike. The sailors strap on any small arms they can to the side of the ship in a last ditch defense. By 1219, the Prince of Wales is left with little anti-aircraft protection. The gunners pour water on their boiling barrels and the loaders scramble to and from the magazine, knowing this will be a gamble at best. A gunner looks up. Contact, due east. A huge formation of aircraft sweep down like a cloud, losing height and once again splitting into two attack formations. Six Betty bombers come in low and race towards the Prince of Wales on a raised starboard side flying under the anti-aircraft fire she could offer on that side. The sailors begin firing with anything they could raise from below, but it's to no avail. All the fire goes harmlessly above the attackers. Torpedoes drop in quick succession. The sailors watch in horror as three torpedo tracks come straight for them. There's a hit. A jagged hole tears right through the ship as the first torpedo blows clean out through the other side, the force of the current dragging sailors under and out of the ship. The second torpedo strikes almost directly under B turret, shooting a plume of oil and water up the side of the ship. The final torpedo strikes the unarmored section of the hull, where there is only one inch thick steel. There's nothing Captain Leach can do the steering gear of his ship is completely useless. Meanwhile, the Repulse is putting up a valiant defense against her attackers. Captain Tennant turns his great ship swiftly towards the diving aircraft, readying his vessel to pass through the tracks of the torpedoes that he knows are coming. The torpedoes drop, and as they run in the water, they leave a telltale trail of white bubbles. Captain Tennant brings all his seamanship to bear, as he manages to dodge the tracks of every one of the torpedoes dropped by the two Japanese squadrons, as well as the others coming from the attack on the Prince of Wales going on at the same time. Each member of the bridge holds on as the ship leans and lists from Tennant's audacious steering. The crew speak later with pride of 19 torpedoes missing due to the maneuver and how the huge ship had been thrown about like a destroyer. 
Incredibly, he also avoids all the bombs from high-level bombers dropped from 12,000 feet. But at 12.20 on the Prince of Wales, Phillips is left with no option. Reluctantly, he orders his radio signalers to break radio silence and transmit to the rest of the task force to come to the aid of the Prince of Wales and the Repulse. At 12.23, the remaining 20 or so torpedo bombers almost simultaneously pounce on Repulse from different directions. Her main guns keep firing against the incoming enemy. The 15-inch shells fly straight into the water, hoping to create a splash powerful enough to get enemy planes into the waves. But the Repulse crew is out of luck today. The first eight aircraft drop their torpedoes on her starboard side. Captain Tennant turns Repulse to starboard to dodge the torpedoes again. But then the three aircraft attack Repulse on her port side. Captain Tennant can do no more than continue his turn to starboard to avoid the first eight torpedoes. The deckhands and gunners keep up as much fire as they can, but they know it will make little difference. Men fall to the floor and cover their heads. A torpedo hits Repulse amidships on the port side, but does little significant damage. She continues maneuvering and steams at 25 knots. Tennant is not going to stop. Set a new heading for... He never finishes his sentence as a torpedo hits. Immediately, nine aircraft attack Repulse from different angles. Six planes attempt to work their way round to her starboard side, while the remaining three Betty bombers go straight in at her port side. It's a skillfully executed attack. Repulse's engines are still fully functioning, but with her rudder jammed, she's simply steaming in a circle. Could you withstand a massive strike? Test your skills by becoming a captain in World of Warships, the sponsor of today's video. They release new content every month, so you can always count on enjoying fresh gameplay experiences in World of Warships' stunning arenas. And for this month only, keep your eyes and ears peeled for exclusive Megadeth content, including Dave Mustaine and Vic Rattlehead commanders, and a Megadeth skin. World of Warships will also be releasing a new line of Japanese battleships in October, so start practicing now. Yarnold loves playing innovative collaborations like Godzilla vs Kong, Transformers and Azure Lane, although Yarnold is still waiting for the call when he'll be put in the game. The stunning new water effects and textures make it so you can almost feel the sea spray on your face. And don't forget, the game's available on console. Support the channel and join the great game today using the code YARNHUB to receive a huge starter pack including 500 doubloons, a million credits and 7 days premium account time and a ship but the fish is not included. Back on the repulse, the gunners don't know what to do. Tell the bridge we can't get a good view of the planes. We need to change course. Enemy incoming! The three Betty bombers fly forward, seemingly unfazed by the ACAC fire the British can muster, and they drop their torpedoes in a slow sequence, as if contemptible of the Navy's attempts to fend them off and they continue their course, strafing the deck and scattering the sailors as they overfly. Of this! A Betty ignites and spins rapidly out of control and thumps into the water. Shortly after, a gunner levelling his weapon at the approaching bomber sends a shell straight through the cockpit. And the Japanese aircraft explodes in mid-air. It's a small constellation. Two explosions tear through the lower decks, immediately causing catastrophic flooding and destroying the engines. Repulse lists to port and looks done for. But the Japanese are not finished yet. At 12.25, the other six torpedo bombers skim the waves towards Repulse's starboard side. The men on deck watch helplessly before scattering for cover. All six planes release their torpedoes at once. The wait is agonizing. Two rudimentary shots ring from the guns as the planes fly overhead, but the torpedoes are still coming. They're silent. A rating puts his head over the rail. He's rocked by a pummeling explosion. Even though five missed, a final torpedo scored the single hit. 
Over the last four to five minutes, Repulse had been hit by four, possibly five torpedoes. Very quickly, the list to port starts to increase, with men leaning and staggering their way through the ship. All 51 of the Japanese torpedo bombers had now completed their attacks, but only eight of the 34 high-level bombers had done so. Two squadrons of high-level bombers remain that had not yet attacked, and each plane carries a single, huge, 500-kilogram bomb. At 12.33 p.m., the first nine of these bombers starts a high-altitude attack. But their bombs are released too early and fail to find their target, missing by a considerable distance. Repulse, with multiple large holes in her hull, now is quickly sinking. The other ships from Task Force Z have now come to their aid. Captain Tennant orders, All hands to the main deck. Life rafts cut loose. Abandon ship. Not one man had left his place of duty until being ordered to do so. But now, dozens of men pour up through the hatches from below or scramble down ladders from stations high in the superstructure. The crew start jumping over the side into a spreading pool of oil. As the ship lists further, men begin climbing up the sloping deck and start to slide down the huge raised starboard side of the battle cruiser. Hundreds of men get away in minutes. However, below decks, many loudspeakers are not working and the men don't hear the order to abandon ship. As she continues rolling over to port, the huge torpedo bulge and its jagged torpedo hull emerge out of the water and the stern rears up to expose her still turning propellers. The stern then slips below the waves and disappears, leaving her bow hanging in the air. For it too, vanishes beneath the waves. Just 11 minutes after the first torpedo had struck her, Captain Tennant fights his way to the surface, emerging by a nearby raft. There's another attack. The Japanese are still not done. A 500 kilogram bomb hits the Prince of Wales, adding to its inevitable defeat. By 12.50 p.m., the end is nigh for the Prince of Wales. She's taken on an estimated 18,000 tonnes of water. Captain Leach orders all the wounded to leave the ship. This is the end. No. He leaves the bridge and comes down to the quarterdeck, where a large group of his crew had congregated. Gentlemen, she's been badly riddled. We need men to try and manoeuvre back to Singapore. If you go, that's fine. His Majesty needs every sailor possible. But let's help our old girl out one last time, eh? There's a slight hesitation. Surely the ship is sinking. They haven't got a hope of navigating to a friendly port. A silence follows before two men let go of the rail and salute. A petty officer and several other ratings also step forward, salute, and fall in behind Leech. Captain Leach smiles and declares an order to those present. Aside from gunners, marines and officers, those who wish to board the express can do so. God save the king. He then climbs back up to the bridge to join Admiral Phillips. Hundreds of men started crossing over to express on makeshift lines and gangplanks. But as the Prince of Wales rolls further over onto her port side and her starboard side lifts, the gap between her and Express starts to widen. The gangplanks fall into the sea, but men continue to swing across on ropes in the cable that still join the two ships. Under the incredible strain, the cable finally snaps. The list of ports starts to worsen. It was clear the ship was now beyond any help from aircraft, destroyers or tugs, Leach comes to the realization that his ship's not going anywhere and reluctantly gives the order. Abandon ship. The battleship starboard bilge keel rises. The skipper of Express skillfully judges the last moment before he's forced to pull away, her hull bumping and grinding on the battleship's heaving keel and almost getting overturned herself. The destroyer suffers a 20-foot gash in her hull from the contact, 
but many men had been saved. Admiral Sir Tom Phillips remains on the bridge almost to the end. He and Captain Leach, silent, contemplating their defeat. The last reports seeing them alive were at 1324, when the two men are on the side of the horizontal ship. Just before she rolls over and capsizes. The destroyer Electra sent a simple signal to headquarters in Singapore. HMS Prince of Wales, sunk. Tragically, in 2023, the Malaysian Coast Guard seized a Chinese ship on suspicion of looting the wrecks. The Chinese dredger Chuan Hong 68 was detained. On board were found shells suspected to be from the HMS Prince of Wales and the HMS Repulse. Thanks again to World of Warships. Check out the link in the description.